James Fletcher has just released a documentary called The Accidental President. It looks at the rise of Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, back in 2016. It, it, it really follows the story going back to the primary, and it takes you all the way through election night and beyond. What happened? How did it happen? Those are the questions answered in The Accidental President. Really happy to have on the show the director, James Fletcher, and also uh, Anthony Scaramucci, who uh, has a few connections to Donald Trump. Guys, how are you? Hey, Noel. Hey, Hi. how are you? Good to Great. see you guys. Jim Fletcher, uh, Anthony Scaramucci, thank you guys so much for taking the time to be with us right here on Meet Me at the Movies. Uh, wow. Uh, here we are four years later. <laughs> And um, the chaos has uh, continued. It's not something that's uh, that's slowed down. Uh, it's it's something that uh, that every day we just uh, ask ourselves, what's next? And if we keep asking ourselves that question, we're going to keep finding out. Just wait. Just wait. James, I'd love for you to share with me why this film needed to be made. It is chaos captured is the way I looked at it. And I was just blown away by how much you had and how much I had forgotten. Um, and, and it's easy to forget when there's so much coming at you. Well, well, part of the reason for making is exactly the point that you just made, which is that, you know, normally after an election, there's a period of reflection. You know, why did Obama win? Why did George W. Bush win? How, what happened? What was going on? And 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 new presidents take a hundred days to you know set their agenda. They they're very purposeful about what they they're going to do, and they want to you know make their mark very early. But it's done extremely seriously and very very thoughtfully in in the normal run of things. But of course, in this case, Trump comes to you know, he wins the election. You know, he, after the inauguration, the, the crazy never stopped, even after election day, as, as president-elect and then as president himself. And, and what's interesting, and a lot of my, my journalist friends told me, is that they, there was never the chance, really, to look back on 2016 because they hit the ground running. And, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the fury of the, of the tweets and the news cycle and everything else just kept adding on. And so, for example, you, you, as you rightly say, it's very easy to forget what happened. But it occurred to me, and look as an outsider looking in, that there was something to talk about. That this had happened, where effectively a game show host had been elected to the most powerful office on planet Earth. And if that isn't the subject of a documentary, I don't know what is. <laughs> so I felt there was a grounds for inquiry. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, Anthony. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us as well. Uh, I want to ask you a couple of questions. First, what is it that initially drew you to? President Donald Trump, what was it about him that you felt connected to and felt like you wanted to be a part of it? And then there'll be a follow-up uh, on that as well. Well, I mean, I'll put it very simply to you. I was a lifelong Republican fundraiser. I was the garden variety fundraiser. I interviewed Jeb Bush last week and yelled at him. I said, God damn it, Jeb, if he had only won the nomination, I would have never gotten anywhere near the White House. I mean, what the hell? And so you have this uh, non-traditional candidate, he wins, and then he asked me to go work for him. And then Steve Bannon and Reince Priebus blocked my job. And then my stupidity kicked in. I had my ego involved. And once you put your ego into something, Noel, your intelligence is going down and your emotions are going up. And so I took the job that the president offered. Uh, I got Steve Bannon out of the White House, which I can am convinced is my single greatest accomplishment in American history thus far. <laughs> that guy was a complete, you know, white Christian nationalist. He would have de further destroyed the country. Uh, and, but uh, there I was, I was a lifelong Republican, a moderate Republican, a Jeb Bush supporter. Uh, I didn't want to break loyalty from the party. And so I got sucked into the Trump orbit. He won. I took the job out of temptation and over enthusiasm and ego, made a mistake doing that. I've owned that mistake. Uh, and then after three years of objectively looking at his presidency, I said, okay, you know, if we had voted in him as CEO of our publicly traded company, let's say you and I were on the board of that company, we had this uh, magnitude of nastiness that's gone on, we would vote to seek his removal. In fact, our outside counsel would come running in and saying, you got to get rid of the guy. And so for me, this is an objective thing. It's not anything overly subjective. The fact that he went after my wife on the presidential Twitter feed, though, that's a little personal. Yeah. 
So, you know, for me, you want to come after my wife. No, we're just getting to know each other, but you can ask Fletcher, do I look like Ted Cruz? <laughs> do I act like Ted Cruz? You're not coming after my wife on the presidential Twitter feed without having a fight with a guy like me. So, so I'm up for the fight. Hopefully we can knock him into next week come November 3rd. What was that the moment for you? This is the follow-up. Was that the moment for you that you said, okay, I'm done. I'm done. This is not what I signed up for. No, no. the moment for me was when he went after the squad. The four women, the African-American, Hispanic, and Muslim American women, uh, he said, go back to the country that you originally came from. That's a racist, nativist trope. My grandmother produced three children. Uh, two served in the Second World War. One was my mom. Uh, my Uncle Anthony, who I'm named after, got the Purple Heart for our country. He was on the beach in Normandy in 1944. These were American patriots, so they have gone back to the country that they originally came from. They believed in and loved the country more than anybody. Yeah. And so my grandmother was always sore about that. And even though I don't agree from a policy perspective with those four women no known as the squad, they have a right to be here in the country. I would like to debate with them in the intellectual marketplace of ideas. I don't need them to go back to the country they originally came from. So, uh, you know, I said, that's racist. That's American nativism, a result of which I've now disavowed my support. I can't take any of this anymore. Yeah. And then he went after me. And then I think I called him Fidel Adolf Trump. I don't know if I told yeah. Fletcher that, but I, I, I used Fidel Adolf Trump because those were the initials of FAT, like the notorious mm -hmm. FAT, because mm -hmm. I know he's like morbidly obese. I know it really bothers him that he's fat. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I got my ass knocked off of Twitter for 12 hours. You can't fat shame people on Twitter. So gotcha. I called him that. He, when I got back up on Twitter, he started going after that must my have been, That must have been the most painful 12 hours of your life, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, was very, it was very rough. It was very, no, it was very rough. And I got back up on Twitter. He started going after my wife, the low life. I said, okay, now we got to make it a New York style fight. Gotcha. And so uh, Anderson Cooper said to me, is this a bar fight? Is this a bar fight? I said, no, this is not a bar fight. I've already dragged the son of a bitch out into the street. This is not a bar fight. And by the way, you can tell by Trump's personality because he's a coward. He's never been in a bar fight, but that's, a, that's for a documentary of another day. <laughs> okay. James, uh, you had so many amazing interviews and I never knew which interview was going to come next. And I've, I've, I've seen documentaries, I've been a part of working on documentaries, and I, I know that there's always a surprise that hits you that maybe you didn't expect. There may be a question you ask, or there may be someone that you wanted just to fill some space, and then all of a sudden, that was uh, an interview that stood out. We know that, that Anthony is the interview, but besides Anthony, besides the what was there one, was there I one love this I'm, I'm giving you a hug over here. I love you. <laughs> I don't appreciate my artistry. So, so we know he a, was. <laughs> I felt like I needed more airtime. Let me just, I have an itch here. Let me just scratch my itch here. I felt like I needed more airtime, but that's fine. No, this is not what you're expecting. <laughs> <laughs> so we know he was the one, yeah. but. Besides him, was, was there a moment or was there a, a quote or was there an interview that just really clicked with you that you were like, wow, I cannot believe that I'm getting this at this moment? Well, honestly, we, it wasn't. Look, in, 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 in a documentary, people always say, have you got a smoking gun? Have you got this reveal, this great reveal that no one's ever heard of? And clearly you've seen it. We, we don't have that. But what we uh, the next best thing is to get a really good narrative going. So we, we have and, and that's what. I feel we, we really did, which is assemble all these little stories, which when you see them in sequence, really explain to you what happened in 2016. And I mean, obviously some interview, some interviewees were better than others by virtue of having their thoughts in order and mm -hmm. having thought about things more deeply. But um, it was, for me, it was the balance. It was having the left and the right almost equally represented. Right. Um, but extracting all these little pieces of information, which I think gives you the totality of what happened in 2016. And, and, and by the way, I'm, we're also not telling anyone what to think. We are presenting a set of facts. What I really want this to do is to, to, is to ignite debate and get people arguing and, and the raging discussions going, which will never end about how this, what, what actually happened to put Trump in the White House. Yeah, I did love the fact that you presented the facts and it, it felt in many ways there was this unfilteredness to it that you were seeing all of these different sides and you're looking at the successes and failures of both sides and you're looking at so many different elements. I, I, I really appreciated there was uh, one uh, 
one quote that came out talking about the October surprise, and it said there really has never been an October surprise that has really made a difference. And I think that to me was, you know, that was fascinating to hear because you continue to hear season in and season out when it's a campaign season, wait for the October surprise. But as we see, it didn't really matter for President Donald Trump. There, were, there was this October surprise about every day in October, and it didn't, didn't really matter. Well, if you can survive Access Hollywood, which you know has been described as the kind of nuclear weapon of 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 attack or or, or consequence, right? You, if you're in a nuclear attack, which basically Access Hollywood was and would have doomed absolutely any other candidate I can think of, if you can survive that, that is a fair, fairly fairly significant data point as to what you're dealing with. And of course, Trump survived, you know, many 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 cardinal errors which also would have doomed any other candidate had anyone else said what he said about john mccain or mexicans as he launched his campaign uh and so on and so forth they would have been absolutely finished so and 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 then of course this year only somebody only pointed out to me the other day that actually the october surprise this year was that trump got covid and he's already back on the campaign trail right 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 but so so anthony yeah yeah so so anthony why is it that given all of those things that James just mentioned, that would have knocked any other candidate off. I mean, you, you, you go back and look years in the past, there have been things that were much less than that, that, you know, the, they were gone. The, the wheels were taken off. Why did we see that not impact Donald Trump? Because like, rightly or wrongly, his supporters don't view him as a politician. And so if he's being seen through the lens of a politician, politicians are sanctimonious and righteous. Mr. Trump has not lived a sanctimonious and righteous life. If you look at the porn stars, the playboy models, the three wives, uh, this is a life that is not typical of a politician. So therefore, they cut him a lot of slack. Let me give you a specific example. Senator Elizabeth Warren, uh, she stated that she was an American Indian on her 1986 Texas bar application. That did tremendous damage to her. That wouldn't even be a paper cut in Trump world uh, for, as it relates to President Trump. But because she has held herself with moral rectitude and righteousness to the American public, she can't fall off the, spe- the pedestal for a second. But he's starting in the gutter. There's nowhere else to go. And so they accept that. It's almost like a Surgeon General's warning label on him. I'm nuts, but I'm your nut. That's basically how he's been running this thing. And no, the other thing that's really interesting about this is when you, when you, what was really unusual in 2016 was having two incredibly famous candidates in Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Right. And normally a campaign spends a lot of time explaining who these people are that most people have never really heard of. Whereas in 2016, most people said, well, I know I've known Donald Trump for 20 years. I, I, I don't like him, but I'll vote for him, or I don't like him, uh, and I won't vote for him, or I like him, I'll vote for him, etc. And the same is true of Hillary Clinton. And that was extremely unusual. Um, and it's a little, little similar this time. Joe Biden, fairly well known to the American people. Uh, but if you think back only to three elections, you know, there was a lot of introduction work that was needed to be done of candidates. Um, and this was, a, 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 again, a very unusual aspect of 2016. So for, for viewers out there who may feel a little bit of campaign fatigue right now, <laughs> which I'm sure there are some, um, and there are some um, pretty great documentaries out there right now that relate to different elements of, of the campaign. Who should watch The Accidental President and why? Other than getting to see the Mooch as the best dressed person on that documentary, by the way. I got to tell you, man. I really get you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can mute Fletcher. Let me see if there's a way for me to mute Fletcher from my computer. <laughs> So, 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 James. <laughs> I mean, listen. Anyone, anyone who is fascinated about how a game show host obtained the most powerful office on planet Earth should watch the Accidental President. That's what we're trying to get to the bottom of. Um, and as I say, it's not a simple answer. It, 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 there is no right or wrong answer. To this it is, it is, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a series of, of occurrences that happened that fell into perfect sequence for Donald Trump to place him in, in, in the White House. You know, the, the conditions were right for a demagogue to end up with that job. It was gonna be, if it wasn't Donald Trump, it could have easily been somewhere, someone else. Right. You know, it was the state America was in, and not, by the way, just America. The UK has elected a prime minister right. on, on, fairly sim, on a fairly similar basis, as has the Ukraine. Uh, 
-hmm. So, you know, there is a lot to learn about the about the state of world politics. It is not just an American story. This is a story that can happen in any country in the world. Um, are we okay with the force of personality being the most vital qualification to become the leader of a country? I mean, I assert there are probably other characteristics that might be more valuable. However, in a media, in a media driven world where, with short attention spans, someone with those skills who, who can master media is going to do significantly better than, than an opponent that cannot achieve that. Anthony, James, thank you both so much for uh, being no, on the show. Very much. Really thank you for your time and uh, wish you the best of success. The accidental president. <laughs> no, thank Thanks, you guys. very much. Thanks, guys. Great to meet you. James Fletcher, Anthony Scaramucci, thank you both so much for taking the time to talk about the accidental president right here on Meet Me at the Movies. Uh, C19 TV, WGWG Cinema Scene, and also Elements of Madness. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it.